What we have here are five amazing firearms that have influenced an entire industry. And these might be the best. They might be my favorites. They might not be your favorites. Maybe you can tell us down in the comments, but we're gonna talk about five very influential firearms. First, I'm gonna tell you that we have a gun giveaway going on right now. It's absolutely free to enter, but it ends really soon. All you gotta do to enter this gun giveaway is click on the link down below to reveal which brand new gun you could win. It's none of these, but there is a brand new gun that you could win out there. So where do we begin five influential firearms that have really helped to shape modern firearms industry, trends, all sorts of things? We have to start, anytime we talk about guns, we have to start with the Model 1911 pattern pistol. Now, the Colt Model 1911 spawned out of the earlier Colt 1905 in 45 ACP, and it became adopted as the first semi-automatic sidearm for the US military. And it's classic, and it's served for a long time, from 1911 all the way through, and we'll talk about this Beretta here, till 1984, 85, when they adopted the Beretta pistol as the military sidearm. But what the 1911 brought was this idea that an auto-loading pistol could be an effective self-defense tool. And they made so many of them, and so many soldiers carried them for so long that it became the standard by which all other self-defense pistols were judged. Now, there is still a huge following for the 1911 pistol. We're talking more than 100 years after it was originally developed, people still love and swear by the 1911 pistol. Newsflash. There are better guns out there now, but there are some people, and they're gonna argue, we'll probably see it in the comments, about how great the 1911 is and the stopping power of the 45 ACP and all of the other elements that go around the 1911. What the 1911 did really do was create an aftermarket which brought firearms accessories to the forefront because there are so many things you can do with a 1911 pistol some people argue that you have to do with a 1911 pistol to make it reliable and accurate. It used to be that you could have it one way or the other. It could be really accurate or it could be really reliable. But there is so much that you can do with a 1911 pistol now just with aftermarket parts. It is amazing. It has spawned its own industry. And the 1911, obviously, been around since 1911. And you know what? It's not going away anytime soon. This big, heavy metal single stack auto loading pistol that gives us seven or eight rounds in the magazine. Big, fat, chunky, old and slow, 45 ACP rounds. I don't wanna hear any jokes about chunky, old and slow. As we move on to the next influential pistol on the list. The 1911, like I said, adopted by the US military in 1911. 1985 brings us the Beretta Model 92 or the M9 pistol and a lot of people argue about what started the Wonder 9, you know, the old Smith & Wesson Model 59 double stack 9mm pistol. But truly, double stack 9mm pistols with the decocking lever and the double action trigger operation truly came into the fore. They truly became well known and truly accepted when the United States military adopted the Beretta 9mm pistol as its official sidearm for the military. Suddenly, police agencies were buying it and people were looking it over for um, home defense and concealed carry. And, and if you want to carry what we call a, the Model 92 is an effective pistol for all of that. Let's move on to other pistols that have truly influenced what's going on in our country and guns that people carry. This is my own personal Smith & Wesson Model 10. I actually bought this one because it was made in the year of my birth. But the Model 10 38 Special, and this one happens to be a heavy barrel model here, was carried by police officers for so long that it just became commonplace for folks to see cops with an old Smith & Wesson Model 10 stuck in the holster and ready to go. And the philosophy behind that was the idea that revolvers were more reliable than these auto-loading pistols. The old saying, six for sure. There were so many Model 10 pistols out there, not only in the US, but in foreign countries, that um, at one point they were being sold for about $169 on the surplus market. They're great, 
they're durable. Smith & Wesson put together a lot of great revolvers, and this is a full-size revolver, and part of the ideology that went into making these revolvers also went into making their smaller snub nose and uh, small frame, the J-frame revolvers and stuff like that. But the Smith & Wesson Model 10 is the one that was most popular and was out there for the longest period of time. They're still out there now. I still shoot this one regularly. I load it with laser ammo and use it for my dry fire training. It's a gun that just keeps going and going and going. I'm going to skip over this pistol and move on to another Smith & Wesson. Looks almost the same as that Model 10, but this is the Model 19. And when people started complaining that the 38 Special wasn't powerful enough, personally, I wouldn't like to get shot with one, but Smith & Wesson then created the early model registered Magnums. They stretched out the 38 Special case and made 357 Magnums. This happens to be a Model 19. Um, this is a beautiful gun in beautiful shape and it uploaded, moved up from, not, not the computer sense, but uploaded that 38 Special case, stretched it out, and made it much more powerful. And again, when we're talking about the, the basis by which people talk about stopping power, that 357 Magnum with 125 grain load was for the longest time considered to be the preeminent stopping power in handgun cartridges. And people would claim it give you that lightning bolt effect. One shot with a 357 Magnum and down they go. There's some downside for this. It's a big heavy gun. Again, these all steel frame guns are big and heavy. But the report and the recoil with the 357 Magnum is truly impressive. And if you want to learn to shoot it well and shoot it quickly, you've got to get big strong hands and strong arms and be ready to control some really stout recoil. But the movement from 38 Special to 357 Magnum had a tremendous influence on firearms marketing, the way people trained. A lot of people would buy 357 Magnum revolvers, then train with 38 Special because they can fire the rounds interchangeably in the 357 cylinder, and then carry the 357 Magnum with duty loads, they would call it, as 357 Magnum loads. And that gave folks a false sense of security. You're dealing with, you know, the training recoil of the, uh, of the less than, than impressive recoil muzzle flash of stuff on the 38 Special. And then when you're under stress, you're expected to function properly with those 357 Magnum loads. But again, we can argue the merits of that. It, the 357 Magnum, especially the Smith & Wesson Model 19, was truly an impressive gun and it had a great influence on what people were carrying and what people were using for self-defense. Now we get to gun number five. And this gun, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, Glock was the original polymer pistol. It isn't, there was polymer pistol before Glock. Glock was the one that made all the news. Back in the early to mid 80s, um, Glock was first adopted by Miami PD right around 1987, 86 or 87. I can remember the old days of gun magazines and people were complaining that these new plastic pistols were going to be snuck through airports and, and they wouldn't get picked up on x-rays and, and all the other extremist, alarmist crap that people complain about, the anti-gunners complain about, every single thing was talked about like that used to, to knock down the Glock. And, and folks who love the 1911 hated the Glock because it was, it was plastic and it was light and it was not going to hold up. And, and you know what? It all proved to be false. The Glock pistol, the Glock Model 17, really started the polymer pistol revolution and pushed us down the road toward lightweight, effective, simple. I mean, what? There's only, I think, 17 or 18 parts. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, just a handful of moving parts, parts altogether in a Glock. It's not as complicated. It's much more reliable than a 1911. And this pushed us into the era of polymer frame pistols so that they would be lightweight, they would be easy to carry. Multiple different sizes came out. This is the duty size, it's the Glock 17. It was the first commonly available Glock pistol that was out there. And when we talk about influencing the market, Glock and the polymer frame pistol areas really changed the way we all looked at firearms. And now it's almost 40 years later, everybody is making a polymer frame pistol. They're the most popular guns on the market. The striker fired mechanism works effectively. It's just a wonderful, I don't know what you'd call it, evolution, a wonderful evolution from 1911 to 
Beretta Model 92 to the Glock Striker fired pistol. Here we have five very influential guns. 1911, Model 92, Smith & Wesson Model 10, Glock 17, and Smith & Wesson Model 19. Which guns have influenced you? Let us know in the comments which really changed your idea about firearms. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. And I'll remind you again, we have that gun giveaway going on. It ends really soon. So click the link below and reveal which brand new gun you could win. I'm Kevin Michalowski, Director of Content for the U.S. Concealed Carry Association. If you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell. We'll notify you every time something new comes out. Stay safe. We'll see you in the next video.